if like me you've led a rather sheltered life, you don't know much about bloodhounds, and Leo's here to show us all about bloodhounds. And we've got the amazing new sport that sprung up in the UK in the last few years. We've got rally obedience. So the rally team's coming in now with Marnie Wells. Get over there. No, Lisa. Well, the rally team will be in any moment. Right, rally team will be joining us any moment now, but I think Andorizio is ready to start a little demonstration with the Hill Works of Music. Then we go into working trials, then to blood downs, then to rally obedience. Good morning, everybody. Just want to talk to you about Hill Works of Music. And Hill Works of Music is a sport that's fun. It's a fun activity where we have our dogs walking at heel and we use music. And my team are showing some heel work where they are marching and they're bringing their dogs round. And my dog's having a good roll. Keep going, keep going. And we've got a variety of breeds here. Stop. We've got a variety of breeds here. And we're changing from the hill work now, and we're doing a bit of freestyle. And we picked a piece of music that hopefully shows happy dogs. Dogs that are enjoying themselves, dogs that are happy, dogs that are having fun. So freestyle, the handlers can choose to do what they wish. And we've got Zebedee over there, who's bouncing. We've got the dogs doing lots of highs. We've got dogs bending down. And we've got the king in the middle here, who is famous for being the king and doing what exactly what he's doing. Now, also, freestyle can involve emotion and pathos. So we're now going to go and pick up our ribbons, and we're going to show that we can change the tone. So we can be emotional. And the team are going to move off to Fields of Gold. Now, Fields of Gold is a piece of music that is very emotional and has special meanings. And we thought that we would use the ribbons to show dogs using a prop, but also to describe the Fields of Gold. And now they're going to stop and they're going to think about the words and how we can illustrate the words of this music. And one of the pieces of word we can illustrate is in their arms. And the dogs are up in the arms. And then they're in the down to illustrate the music. And then they're going to lie in the fields of gold. And how good are these dogs not to be killing the ribbon? And now they're going to use the ring and do anything to illustrate that music. And we're showing calmness and good fun. And then they're going to think about picking up their flags and putting their ribbons away and moving off. And I like a nice tidy square. So we're going to go slowly, ready? Slowly, off you go, girls. So we're doing slow pace heel work and we're listening to the music and we're going to change with that music. That's good. Happy dogs, proud dogs. And we've got a king there. So they're going to now go into the centre and bow to the king. And the king is thinking about whether he's going to accept that. And they're going to go in again and bow to the king. So this is us choreographing a routine. And the king is a Tibetan Spaniel. And anyone that knows Tibetan Spaniels knows this is a well-trained one because I'm surprised he's still there. How am I going to go slowly, just showing off your dogs, happy, healthy, fit dogs that enjoy their sport. And now we're going to go a bit quicker. Go, Jill. 
Show off your dogs. Big round of applause, please. And the king is still there. God save the king. Thank you. I'm now going to pass over to Stanford, who's going to talk to you about working trials. Thank you, Anne. Good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have a short demo of working trials. What is working trials? It's a sport that's almost 100 years old now. We're going to show you an exercise that's fairly unique to our sport. That's speaking on command. I know most of you with dogs, they can bark, but doing it under control is something very different. So you have one dog here in a stationary position speaking and not speaking when told to, and you'll have a dog on the move. Whilst this is happening, around the outside of them, somebody is going to demonstrate, Sarah is going to demonstrate what is our most important discipline, that is tracking the dog follows a disturbance on the ground. Now you're probably thinking, how on earth could a dog track in here? There has been so many dogs, so many people in here over the past three days, but dogs are capable of this. They have a nose far, far better than ours. You know, we only know when the dinner's burnt, don't we? But dogs, incredible ability. Now this dog of Sarah's is gonna come out and we're going to bring a Labrador today as it's Gun Dog Day. And Sarah is going to demonstrate to you by follow, getting her dog, Esther, to follow the disturbance left by Sarah, the handler. All right. Now, in competition, these tracks are some three hours old. Now, the dog has worked on a harness and line. And yes, there have been millions of people across here, but this dog can still follow where the handlers walked. Now the harness and line is used to indicate the dog is doing this particular exercise only. There we are, we've taken the turn. And the dog's tracking well. You see his nose to the ground. Now you'll, you'll see a demo from the bloodhounds in a moment. Bloodhounds hunt in a very, very different way to us. They hunt and we don't. There's the first article. Now the dog indicates the article because it's something that's been touched by a person. It's got human scent on it, albeit its owners. And on the dog goes again. There we are. He's casting to say that it doesn't go straight on. And look at that dog's ability. Look at that nose, inches from the ground. Such ability. Second article recovered. The dog's very interested in all these little markers in here. But you can see the concentration in this dog. I can assure you, I've got a D German Shepherd at home that I think can track well. I don't volunteer to come in here and do this. There we are, he's on his last leg, and just coming up to the last article. Well done, Sarah, well done, Esther, that's excellent. Okay, now we're gonna show you an exercise of send away and redirection. This is Cozzy, Cozzy's Border Collie. This is the most popular breed of dog within our sport. Now Barry sent the dog out, done a send away. In competition, this could be two, 300 yards, and he's redirected him. Again, could be two to 300 yards. There we are, excellent control. Okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. I'll hand you over to my dear friend, Miss Leonardo Podozinski. Thank you, Stan. Um, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or good afternoon, as the case may be. We've got two lovely bloodhounds here for you today. We've got Amy, Amy Williams with Sybil, and uh, we've got Robert with Happy Howard. 
Uh, the reason we've got Howard here today is that the lady that should have been here today has sadly broken down and can't get her bloodhounds here, so we've had to borrow Howard out of the Discover Dogs uh, area so that we can at least bring two hounds for you here. David and his daughter Amy have got Sybil. Sybil works and goes to shows and is also a family pet. They have other dogs at home and uh, they're quite a large family. Howard is a much loved pet belonging to a couple that are here today at Discover Dogs who also have his little sister. As Stan has just said, bloodhounds work very differently to the working trials dogs. Our dogs hunt, they don't track, they're scent hounds and scent moves. We don't necessarily expect our hounds to work the scent of what we call the clean boot, which is the natural scent of the human being. People dress like yourselves and myself, with the exception of when we're walking across country, to walk what we call a line for the bloodhounds. We probably have a good pair of walking shoes or a stout pair of boots. You leave what we call a smeller at the start of the line, which could be a handkerchief, a necktie, it could be a sock. The hound goes and identifies the smeller. Once it's absorbed the, your body smell into, into his or her nostrils, it will then start and work the ground to pick up your smell and it will follow your smell to wherever you have walked. And you could have walked a mile, two miles, three miles, four miles. The scent could be anything from half an hour to two hours, to six hours, to 12 hours cold, 24 hours cold. They have a marvelous ability to smell of these hounds and they've always been renowned for being able to work the scent of a human being. Trials are run under the umbrella of the Kennel Club. We have four championship bloodhound trials a year. We are very much a minority sport with a minority membership. Our breed, like many of the native vulnerable breeds, is a little bit in trouble at the minute because of lack of interest in the breed, uh, particularly for bloodhound trials. I've been in the breed 50 years and I'm ra it's rather sad to see the numbers deplete as they are doing at the minute. They've never, never, ever been high, but they certainly have been a lot higher than what they are at the minute. A lovely old breed. Ancestry can be traced back to approximately 1066 when William the Conqueror came to these shores and brought a variety of hunting dogs with him and there were hounds of the bloodhound type amongst those. Obviously in those days they, they were hunting game. This is all now finished. Our hounds hunt the, what we call the clean boot. We get an awful lot of pleasure from them. They're lovely, lovely dogs with a good temperament and uh, providing they're selectively bred from a small gene pool, there is no unearthly reason why you should not have a fit, healthy bloodhound that's fit for function and fit to compete at trials and being a dual purpose breed will also compete in the show ring and also make lovely pets. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got Sybil and we've got Howard and thank you very much. And I'll hand you over now to Claire Coughlin Khan and her obedience team. Thank you, Claire. Back. Good afternoon. Let's have a big warm welcome for the rally display team as they come into the middle of the arena. And I must first of all point out that for all of these dogs and handlers, it's their very first time in the main arena, so it's a big deal for them. So we've got some introductions first of all. Down the side there, that's the Border Collie. That's Max with Claire. Then we have uh, an Australian working Kelpie. It's Hope with Richard. And we have a mini poodle. It's LB with Yvonne. Oh, he's got some fans in the audience. And we have a golden retriever. It's Bradley with Sue. And then please have a marvellous round of applause. This is Aki with Alessandro, all the way from Italy. He's got some fans here as well. So the first thing we're going to show you is a turn and down exercise. So the handlers are going to get ready. So rally is derived from elements of competitive obedience, but it also mixes in elements of agility, working trials, heel work to music, all sorts of things. So you notice here we're at different stages of the exercise in our training, and we're able to get the dog down at a distance, and then the handlers return to the dogs. Our Kelpie is learning the exercise, which is why she did a shorter down there. 
and then we give the dog some praise. Let's keep the support coming, ladies and gentlemen. So the next exercise we're going to show you is a placed retrieve, and I'm bringing out a dumbbell here for our golden retriever. Now you notice he's walking away doing heel work at the moment. This is because he's not allowed to see the dumbbell going out into position. Now he's spotted it. Out he goes to fetch his dumbbell and into a present. Take it and a finish. Now while Sue's out in the middle there, we must just mention that she represented the Midlands region in the first ever inter-regional rally competition, which took place here on Thursday. And she only went and won level six, didn't she? So let's give her a massive round of applause. Well done. So the next thing to show you is our Kelpie. And she's being asked to wait there in the sit position. And she's going to show us one of the bonus exercises that we find in rally, which is a call to heel. So in she comes into heel position with a sit, and then she gets her food treat and her reward. Well done, Hope. So now we have our next dog. This is LB, our little poodle. And we're doing a moving stand. So you notice there he's been left in the stand position. He's gone into a sit, and now we're going to call him. And he turns, goes round the back, and into heel work. Turn and call to heel. Well done, LB. OK, now we move on to our Border Collie. That's Max there. Now he's going to do a down on recall. So we leave him in the sit position. Now these dogs are working off the lead, but if you're thinking of taking up rally, levels one and two are done on the lead. Oh, look at that. Straight into a down, back into a recall, and a finish. Oh, he's got lots of fans in the audience. Well done, Max. Good one. OK. Now, we've got Rally Italian style, so in we come. Now, notice this free walking. So in Italy, you are allowed to, whoa, look at that, moving back up. Lovely, happy, flat-coated retriever. Traveled hundreds of miles by car to be here today, and he's realizing his lifetime ambition, Alessandro, of being here at Cruft. So let's give him a special round of applause. Right. Now we have the jump coming out. And we also have some signs. In Rally, we use signs. So the instructions are on the signs that handlers have to follow. So Simonetta here, who is also from Italy, she's a prominent Rally judge over there. She's placing out some signs. Now, these don't necessarily relate to what we're doing right now, but they're to give you an idea of the kind of thing that you'd be expected to follow. So can we have our first jump, please? So we've got our Kelpie here. And we're doing one of the three types of jumps that are found. And this is a send over jump. Off we go over the jump and handler runs by. Well done, let's have the next jump. So here's Bradley, he's now going to do a recall over a jump. So he's been asked to wait there. Now this will be interesting because we also have a dumbbell with us. So these two favorite things all together. Oh, no problem there. Into a present and a finish. Well done, Bradley. Right, now we have Max. Now, this is the third type of jump to be found. And you notice he's keen to get going there. He's doing a directed jump. So, handler walks in a straight line. Dog over the jump and back into the handler. Well done, you. So, last one to go is LB. And then, of course, we must finish with our special Italian guest. So, we have a straight line here. And again, notice the signalling from the handler. Over he comes, and he's doing the high jump. There he goes, into a present, and a finish. Let's hear it for LB. And finally, we have a jump from our Italian friend here. Now, this dog represents Italy for agility, so it should be easy for him. So, he's asked to wait. And over he comes. Oh, no problem. <laughs> And you notice he goes straight to finish in Italy. Well done. So the team are going to come back over here now. So thanks for the support, ladies and gentlemen. Do come and find out more about Rally. Any breed can do it. So we're going to give you a wave now before we leave you. Thank you very much for watching the Rally display. And give all the teams a big round of applause, folks. A great demonstration from all the teams.
So Claire Coffran Khan and the rally team. We've got the Bloodhounds with Liam just leaving the arena over here. We've got Anne and the Heel to Music team leaving over this side and not forgetting Stan Ford and the Work Controls team.